And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who gives the most superb, spectacular performance of the current season in the musical hit, What Made Sammy Run, What Makes Him Run, Mr. Steve Sammy Glick Lawrence. Thank you. On my left, a very lovely, talented, and charming Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. another wonderful actor and great game player, Martin Gable. Now, a man whose lucidity of expression will be used to darken and obscure the truth, <laughs> Mr. J.C. Daly. Well, I must say, I want to uh, share in the remarks that uh, Arlene made, Steve. As a matter of fact, the New York critics were so complete in their praise of your splendid performance that we felt we had to go to some rather special ends since you were with us tonight. So, panel, get your masks ready. We are going to have two <laughs> mystery guests tonight, complete, wow. so that uh, uh, rather quick. we can have a rather special celebration of Steve's great success. We have some interesting occupations as well as our mystery guests. And uh, we'll meet the first of the mystery guests after this. All right, panel, remembering now that this is the first of two mystery guests tonight, I must ask if your blindfolds are all in place. Yes, John. Yes, John. In that event, will our first mystery guest enter and sign in, please? Remember, panel, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with Arlene Francis. Uh, would your name appear in the entertainment pages of the paper? Nope. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Lawrence. No. Was that a no? That was a no. Uh, would it appear in the uh, sports section of a newspaper? Yep. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, is your sport uh, one which uses equipment? Yep. Mr. Gable, is your sport a seasonal sport? Yep. Miss Francis? Would it be baseball? Yep. Mr. Lawrence? Uh, would you be on one of the local New York teams? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Are you on a West Coast team? Nope. Three down and seven Hold to go, Mr. Back. Gable? No. Nope. nope. Uh, are you or were you on a team in the Middle West? Yep. Miss Francis? Are you a manager rather than a performer in the sport? Nope. Four down, six to go, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, would your position be in the infield rather than the outfield? I mean, any place from second base to home. I mean, you know, from first, second, player. third, short, or home. <laughs> As opposed to... Yes, I don't see why I'm explaining this to you. You, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. You're in the wrong game. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Miss Kilgallen? Yep. What is he, an infielder? Well, was, was well the, it was first, the second, issue third, was, short, is, is his position in the infield. I defer yep. to Mr. Gable. Yes. Did you play for the St. Louis Cardinals? Yep. Are you Stan Musial? That idea was throwing, but I know we'll kick all the cards over. And 
May I congratulate you for my colleagues, and I guess for everybody who's in the theater and everybody in the country on your appointment to uh, direct the president's physical fitness program. Yes, fine, John. Thank you. I'm very... I'm very highly honored to be a part of uh, President Johnson's physical fitness program. Of course, there's nothing better than, uh, than the physical fitness of the youth of our country, so I'm very proud about that. You have every reason to be, and I must say that if you're one of the youth of the country, you sure look fit, mister. That's all I got to say. Well, fine, John. Can I ask you to tell a story? Actually, I'm, I've had the, the, the good fortune to know Stan, because we share a good mutual friend named Toot Shore, as, as Martin did, too. And Toot once told me a story. Would you please not beat that <laughs> microphone up just because you're fit, Stan? Now, come on. That's the only microphone we got from that position tonight. You can't do this. Is it still working? Bang, bang. Boom. No, but you remember the right. story Toot told me once that that uh, you hit 3.30, I think it was, at 60, 1962, and the late President Kennedy called you. And he called you on the phone and said, uh, sent you a message. Oh, yes, he said, well, he said uh, something about, uh, here I'm uh, 42 and hitting 3.30, and when I should be retiring, and uh, I'm still a young fella. He, was, he believed in our youth. He really did. And I think he said, though, that you, you make it true that uh, life begins at 40. Right, right. Is right, that what right. he said? That's the story as I remember. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that's right. Well, I must say, it's a challenge. The, the, uh, if we had to read some of the statistics in the papers, our young folks need to be inspired to a greater interest in physical fitness. And uh, I must say, inspiration is something you sure have got for him. So I'm, I'm sure that you're going to have a very successful tour of duty. Well, fine, John. Thanks for Good. staying up Good. so late and coming to visit us, Ken. Nice, Wonderful nice to have you with us. to meet our first regular challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Nancy Henry. <laughs> Miss or Mrs. Henry? Mrs. Mrs. Henry, I must say, that's as good a job with a chalk as I've seen in many, many years. That's wonderful. What a I'm fine. proud of it. A fine job it is. Would you tell us where you're from? Somerset, New Jersey. Somerset, New yes. Jersey. That's nearby, is it? Is it across the river? Oh, right across the river. Right across the river. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mrs. Henry, may I present our panel? Okay. Now, will you join me over here, please? And uh, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. that Mrs. Henry is salaried and deals in a product, and I think we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Martin Gable. Uh, Mrs. Henry, is your product something that would be useful to me? Definitely. Is it something that's more useful for men than women? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that's found in the home, Mrs. Henry? Yes. Uh, would it be found uh, in any particular part of the home more than another? No. Let me have a small moment. Maybe John would keep it in a different room. <laughs> All right, fine. Mrs. Henry agrees, Arlene, that we might mislead you. We will agree that uh, the product in the home might tend in most circumstances to be located in one place rather than anywhere at all around the house. So to that degree, we'll give you a, a qualified yes. Well, I can be sure that you'll give me a qualified no when I ask you whether it is something that might be kept in the kitchen or dining room. Could be, yes. It could be, but we, we stress the could be. I see. Uh, may I rule out that it is something to eat? Yes. Is it uh, some sort of equipment of some kind that one might use in the home? Yes. Well, now, you, when you speak of equipment here, you have reference to the normal home appliances that uh, one would use either electrically or otherwise <laughs> powered? I don't know. What do you have in mind, John? The lucidity of expression I was talking about. Well, the thing of the lucidity of expression requires here because I think it would be confusing if I right, give you John. a no. We won't, yes. we won't describe this as equipment. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, uh, would your, if, if it's not equipment, can I rule out that it doesn't have any electrical parts? Yes. 
Can you rule out that it doesn't, the double negative being affirmative? I mean that it, I, can, I, I, I can rule out that it does not have electrical parts. And not, you don't have to plug it in to work it. Correct. Good. <laughs> I, can rule, I can rule out that it's not transistorized too, is that right? Yes, you are, yes. All right. Now, this uh, product that you have can be found in the kitchen and the dining room and, for that matter, almost anywhere else in the, in the home. I you could, yes. yes. You mm -hmm. could. Uh, would it have anything to do with making you more comfortable? I can yes. think of circumstances where it would make like you feel more comfortable, yes. Yes. Uh, you don't know me very well, but would I have it in my home? You, I would think so. Sure. Yeah. Well, the way you said that, I think I'd better get rid of it real quick. <laughs> With you running, you'll need it. Oh. Oh, ho. Oh, ho, ho. Um, this product that you have, can it be worn? Yes. Uh, can it be worn, uh, I mean, outside of, like, clothing? Can I rule out that it is not a, a piece of clothing that you can wear like a... Uh, can you rule out that it is not a piece of clothing? Yes. <laughs> no. So your question is, is it a piece of clothing? No, that's not my question, John. That's your question. <laughs> I mean, you can rule it out that it is not clothing. There's something that you would wear, like a... Some sort of... Uh... Now, your question is... <laughs> my question evidently this is This is something you, one would wear that is not a piece of clothing. Right. That's your question? Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ahead so far, yes. Um... <laughs> I, think I'm up, I think I'm up a blind alley. I'd better pass the Dorothy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Henry, when you wear this product, is it generally out of sight? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Cable. Question, Steve. You could have done that well. Is it, <laughs> is it made of something other than clothing material? Yes. Could it be defined as some kind of uh, makeup? No, I don't think we could no. define it as makeup, Martin. Well, if it were a wig, John, it would be. Uh, oh, I would agree with you then. The old fact it was. But this is no muck it this, as Got we it, say. John. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Oh. Would it be seen from the waist up? Yes. Would it be seen from the shoulders up? Yes. <laughs> Would it be seen in the area of the face? Certainly. <laughs> and it is not makeup. That's been ruled out, has That's it not? That's been ruled out. And that includes false eyelashes and beards. And eyeballs. Mm -hmm. What else is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I know it's not muzzles because he shouldn't have one of those. So, can we have a conference for one second? You can have 30 second? seconds for a conference. Um, ask her if it shows more when you smile. <laughs> Does it show more when you smile, Mrs. Henry? <laughs> no. no it doesn't. Thank you, Dorothy. So <laughs> five down and five to go. Steve, it's your uh, turn again. Well, I take it by that that it wouldn't show more when you frown. But uh, would it be uh, anything... From the nose up? Certainly. We're narrowing yeah, it down now. Where? We're closing in. Yes. It can be anywhere on the face? Yes. Yeah. It's a veil. Uh, <laughs> Steve would hardly wear a veil. Or more than neither. No, goodness no. Uh, would it be a, a wig of some kind? No. no. Six out and four to go. I'm going to give you one more minute because you're floundering Is here. Is this made of material? Yes. Yeah. And it is seen when it's worn. Is it worn on the front of the face as well as the back of the head? Mm-hmm. Yes. Does it cover any portion of the face? Yes. Does, oh. it, cover, does it cover the forehead? Yes. It can. Oh, what, Arlene? I'm Master. not going to tell you. I you, I'll you, you up. made trouble for me. I'll make trouble for you. <laughs> uh, is it any kind of a mask? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Martin? Uh, with all this... Perfect cross-examination has been going on. I am some leagues behind where I was when we began asking the questions now. 
It's not a mask, it's not a wig, it's not makeup, and it's not material such as clothing material. It is material. It's, it's material, material, but not such as clothing material. Not such as clothing material. Uh, I pass to my wife. <laughs> oh. M may I rule out leather? Sure. All right. Is it uh, anything you can see through? I oh. guess some of them are. Because I'm going to turn all I the would, cards over. Uh, Let's John, see if you guess. I, uh, I'd like to be, I've been watching this program for a long time. I'd like to be the first one in 14 years to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any idea? Dorothy, do you have an idea? No. Band-Aid? Not a towel, is it? Band-Aid? Band-Aid. <laughs> Mr. Johnson and Johnson's Band-Aid. Band John, to me, a Band-Aid is someone who works with an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Oh, oh, boy. I can We've see... Been missing Bennett, sir. We, yeah. <laughs> that moment. We get rid of Bennett, we get him all the way down in South America, and then look what happens to us. Steve comes and does it to us. What is the technical name? Not I'm an inspector packer of the Band-Aid brand adhesive bandages. I uh, inspect it to see that you get the very best, and I pack it. Oh. An as adhesive a, bandage, I guess, right. is the full name. <coughs> you inspect yes. Band-Aids? If you yes. use Band-Aid, and it's not a Band-Aid, if you use it as a generic term, you get a letter from it. Johnson & Johnson. Right. Yeah. Good show. <laughs> Mrs. Henry, thank you. Good it was fun puzzling the panel, thank and thank you for helping to do it. Nice to see you. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's second mystery guest in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. And now the second go-round with mystery guests, and that requires that my colleagues on the panel once again blindfold themselves. The yeah. process of doing so now in... Being, is it all over? You've got the blindfolds all securely on pen? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, our second mystery guest, enter and sign in, please. <laughs> all right. All right, panel, so once again, I would remind you that... Uh, it's one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with um, Steve Lawrence. Uh, are you in the entertainment business? Yes, I am. <laughs> Have you ever been a member of this panel? <laughs> Upon <laughs> occasion. <laughs> 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 Whoever you are. <laughs> oh, dear. But are you now appearing on Broadway? <laughs> In front of my hotel, yes. <laughs> Did you go to California this morning? <laughs> I told somebody I was. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, since I believe everything you've told me, Steve, I don't believe it's you. Because if you, if you told me you went to California, I believe that it's not Steve Allen. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, <God>. I've never <laughs> seen one come apart so quickly. <laughs> Right what a disguise. <laughs> now, but we've got, we've got to fill in the puzzle. The wonderful thing about this is, is you all know what Steve Lawrence uh, has meant to Steve Allen and vice versa. And Steve, uh, Allen and his bride came in from California just to go and see Steve Lawrence in What Makes Sammy Run. And they went to the theater Saturday night and afterwards went through an elaborate proceeding of saying yeah. goodbye. You were I took them home. Everything <laughs> we hugged and carried on. <laughs> we were just parting scene. Oh, boy, I won't see Gene and I were yawning. We kept saying, Steve, I'm sorry. We have to catch a plane at 9 in the morning, so we'll see you in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known better than to trust you, Steve Allen. <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't work. Well, because actually it worked for about 10 seconds. <laughs> you asked uh, the first just question. About. Just uh, about Ted Steve said. Allen is probably the greatest talent of the world, but you're a terrible impressionist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, with such a brilliant recovery, we'll have to agree, panel, that you get some congratulations, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now our final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Tony Wilson. I'm just about. All right. Um, Mr. Wilson, where are you from? I'm from Yonkers, New York. Yonkers, New York. Right. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? If you'll join me over here, we'll tell the audience at home and the audience in the theater exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that Mr. Wilson is salaried and deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Could I use your product, Mr. Wilson? Yes, I think so. Could I lift it? Yes. <laughs> uh, may I rule out that it's anything to eat? No. no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. Is it something that... Is it something to eat? Yes, it is. Is it something that one would be more likely to have at dinner than at breakfast? Mm. No, I would think not, Martin. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is it a solid rather than a liquid? Uh, sometimes. 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 Yes. Yes. It's sometimes, sometimes solid and sometimes liquid. Yes. Um, Good does that mean that it could melt? It could, yes. Very different. Is it kept in the refrigerator? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Lawrence. Well, that uh, completely threw me. It's sometimes liquid and sometimes I'd solid. I'd like to do that. Uh, you'd have it at breakfast time, you did say, yes? Would it, uh, would it be anything like uh, in the juice family? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a dairy product? No, it's not. Five down and five to go, Mr. Gable. Is it some form of jello? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is there any fruit associated with it? No, not, not directly. directly. Not directly. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Lawrence. Bring back Steve Allen. Oh. <laughs> uh, can we, uh, we have a short conference? You can have 30 time? seconds for a conference. Maybe it's something you mix up like that makes a batter like pancakes. I mean, I, that's probably wrong. Is it something that you mix up like a batter in pancakes? <laughs> like a batter in pancakes or like a batter in baseball, though? That's eight down and two to go, Miss Kilk. Is Thanks, it an Alan. egg? An egg, no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. No, Gable. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it eaten at dinner as well as breakfast? This can be. Can be, yes. Uh, would you call it a vegetable? No. It's over. Now, it's come over. on, honey. You oh, all know the answer to this one, don't you, honey? Huh? Oh, it's honey. Honey? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wilson is of uh, the Wilson. Is it R.B. Wilson? Yeah. R.B. Wilson. What do you call it? It's when is the it in the cone? They crystallize it, Dorothy. When it's crystallized. Don't you ever when eat honey that? from the honeycomb? I do. Creamed no. honey. Creamed honey, and they crystallize it. Okay. One thing that will interest you that Mr. Wilson's involved in the flower show because as a part of their business, they have so much beeswax left over after the honey <laughs> that there's can there are candles at the We flower. make candles. They make candles from the beeswax. We handle candles. And that's one. Thank you very much, sir. It's nice Thank to you puzzle the panel with you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and there again, may I say it's a joy to have had you with us, Steve, and Martin, wonderful to see you there. And uh, good night to uh, Mrs. Gable. Good night, Mr. Danny. Good night, dear Steve. Long, long run. Thank you very much, Arlene. And good night, John. Nice good to see you. Good night, John. Same for me, too, Thank about you. the show. Good night, Martin. Dear. Good night, Dorothy. Nice seeing you. John, always a pleasure. Good night, Martin. And good night, Bennett, sir, wherever you are. And thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. Johnny Olson speaking. Could be, but we, we stress the could be. I see. Uh, may I rule out that it is something to eat? Yes. 
Is it uh, some sort of equipment of some kind that one might use in the home? Yes. Well, now, you, when you speak of equipment here, you have reference to the normal home appliances that uh, one would use either electrically or otherwise <laughs> powered. I don't know. What do you have in mind, John? <laughs> the lucidity of expression I was talking about. <laughs> well, the thing of the lucidity of expression requires here because I think it would be confusing if I give you a no. We won't, yes. we won't describe this as equipment. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Lawrence. Um, uh, would your, if, if it's not equipment, can I rule out that it doesn't have any electrical parts? Yes. Can you rule out that it doesn't? The double negative being affirmative. I mean that it. I can. I. I, I can rule out that it does not have electrical parts. And not. You don't have to plug it in to work it. Correct. Good. <laughs> I can rule. I can rule out that it's not transistorized too. Is that right? Yes. You. Oh yes. All right. Now this uh, product that you have can be found in the kitchen and the dining room, and for that matter, almost anywhere else in the, in the home. You I could. Yes. yes. You could. Uh. Would it have anything to do with making you more comfortable? I could yes. think of circumstances where it would make you feel more comfortable, yes. Yes. Uh, you don't know me very well, but would I have it in my home? You, I would think so. Sure. Yeah. Well, the way you said that, I think I'd better get rid of it real quick. <laughs> with you running, you'll need it. Oh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Um, this product that you have, can it be worn? Yes. Uh, can it be worn, uh, I mean, outside of, like, clothing? Can I rule out that it is not a, a piece of clothing that you can wear like a... Uh, can you rule out that it is not a piece of clothing? Yes. No. So your question is, is it a piece of clothing? No, that's not my question, John. That's your question. <laughs> Did you play for the St. Louis Cardinals? Yep. Are you Stan Musial? That's a fun. That idea is, I don't know but I know we'll kick all the cards over. And uh, may I congratulate you for my colleagues and I guess for everybody who's in the theater and everybody in the country on your appointment to uh, direct the president's physical fitness program. Yes, fine, John. Thank you. I'm very, I'm very highly honored to be a part of uh, President Johnson's physical fitness program. Of course, there's nothing better than, uh, than the physical fitness of the youth of our country, so I'm very proud about that. You have every reason to be it. I must say that if you're one of the youth of the country, you sure look fit, mister. That's all I got to say. Well, fine, John. Can I ask you to tell a story? Actually, I'm, I've had the, the, the good fortune to know Stan because we share a good mutual friend named Toot Shore, as, as Martin did, too. And Toot once told me a story. Would you please not beat that <laughs> microphone up just because you're fit, Stan? Now, come on. That's the only microphone we got from that position tonight. You can't do this. Is it still working? Bang, bang. Boom. Now, but you remember the story Toot told me once that that uh, you hit 3.30, I think it was, at 60, 1962, and the late President Kennedy called you. And he called you on the phone and said, uh, sent you a message. Oh, yes, he said, well, he said uh, something about, uh, here I'm uh, 42 and hitting 3.30, and when I should be retiring, and uh, I'm still a young fella. He, was, he believed in our youth. He really did. And I think he said, though, that you, you make it true that uh, life begins at 40. Right, right. Is right, that what right. he said? That's the story as I remember. Right, right, right. No, that's right. Well, I must say, it's a challenge. The, the, uh, if we had to read some of the statistics in the papers, our young folks need to be inspired to a greater interest in physical fitness. And uh, I must say, inspiration is something you sure have got for him. So I'm, I'm sure that you're going to have a very successful tour of duty. Well, fine, John. Thanks for Good. staying up Good. so late and coming to visit us, Ken. Nice, Wonderful nice to have you with us. Two mystery guests tonight. I must ask if your blindfolds are all in place. Yes, John. Yes, John. In that event, will our first mystery guest enter and sign in, please? Remember, panel, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with Arlene Francis. 
Uh, would your name appear in the entertainment pages of the paper? Nope. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Lawrence. No. Was that a no? That was a no. Uh, would it appear in the uh, sports section of a newspaper? Yep. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, is your sport uh, one which uses equipment? Yep. Mr. Gable? Is your sport a seasonal sport? Yep. Miss Francis? Would it be baseball? Yep. Mr. Lawrence? Uh, would you be on one of the local New York teams? No. Two down and eight to go. Mr. Gallagher. Are you on a West Coast team? Nope. Three down and seven Open to go, back. Mr. Gable. No. Nope. 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 Uh, are you or were you on a team in the Middle West? Yep. Miss Francis? Are you a manager rather than a performer? in the sport. Nope. Four down, six to go, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, would your position be in the infield rather than the outfield? I mean, any place from second base to home. I mean, you know, from first, second, player. third, short, or home. <laughs> As opposed to... Yes, I don't see why I'm explaining this to you. You, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. You're in the wrong game. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Miss Kilgallen? Yep. What is he, an infielder? Well, was, was well the, it was first, the second, issue third, was, short, is, is his position in the infield. I defer yep. to Mr. Gale. Yes. All right, now to meet our first regular challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Nancy? Henry. Miss or Mrs. Henry? Mrs. Mrs. Henry, I must say, that's as good a job with a chalk as I've seen in many, I'm many years. That's wonderful. What a I'm fine, proud of it. A fine job it is. Would you tell us where you're from? Somerset, New Jersey. Somerset, New yes. Jersey. That's nearby, is it? Is it across the river? Oh, right across the river. Right across the river. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mrs. Henry, may I present our panel? Now, will you join me over here, please? And uh, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Then we can tell you that Mrs. Henry is salaried and deals in a product, and I think we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Martin Gable. Uh, Mrs. Henry, is your product something that would be useful to me? Definitely. Is it something that's more useful for men than women? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that's found in the home, Mrs. Henry? Yes. Uh, would it be found uh, in any particular part of the home more than another? No. Let me have a small moment. John would keep it in a different room. <laughs> All right, fine. Mrs. Henry agrees, Arlene, that we might mislead you. We will agree that uh, the product in the home might tend in most circumstances to be located in one place rather than anywhere at all around the house. So to that degree, we'll give you a, a qualified yes. Well, I can be sure that you'll give me a qualified no when I ask you whether it is something that might be kept in the kitchen or dining room. And now, let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> and now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who gives the most superb, spectacular performance of the current season in the musical hit, What Made Sammy Run, What Makes Him Run, Mr. Steve Sammy Glick Lawrence. Thank you. On my left, a very lovely, 
talented and charming Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, another wonderful actor and great game player, Martin Gable. Now, a man whose lucidity of expression will be used to darken and obscure the truth, <laughs> Mr. J.C. Daly. Well, I must say, I want to uh, share in the remarks that uh, Arlene made, Steve. As a matter of fact, the New York critics were so complete in their praise of your splendid performance that we felt we had to go to some rather special ends since you were with us tonight. So, panel, get your masks ready. We're going to have <laughs> two mystery guests tonight, complete. Wow. So that uh, uh, rather quick. we can have a rather special celebration of Steve's great success. We have some interesting occupations as well as our mystery guests. And uh, we'll meet the first of the mystery guests after this. All right, panel, remembering now that this is the first of...